Hey guys, Furum here, and today I will not be testing the TVR Griffith, the multiplayer in Asphalt 9, but Bebop has given me some races in his 4-star fully maxed one. It has all upgrades and import parts applied, even all the epics. Now, one reason I want to make this video now, after the Furai comes out, is because, well, in the Furai video, I basically said that it was the new king of Class D, or at least that's what I said in the title, and I was saying that throughout the video. But then people reminded me the TVR Griffith is actually quite a bit faster and in the hands of a really skilled driver is probably actually able to get a better lap time than the Mazda Furai on the majority of tracks. So it's quite possible that this is truly the real king of class D and I will likely reflect that on my next best and worst cars in each class list video in which I will likely put the Furai in second place. Speaking of that video, I have begun working on the list for the classes that are going to be in that video, which is going to come out sometime before the next update. Hopefully sooner rather than later, but I want it to be as accurate as possible. I'm working with a small group of people on it, so hopefully we'll be able to see it I don't want to give a specific time frame because I'm not entirely sure when it will be done, but definitely before the next update. So after having a bit of a battle with that Elise, Bebop finally comes out of the tunnel and passes him in the Griffith. Now, the Griffith's biggest strength, as you can probably tell from this video, is its top speed. You see, it can go over 218 miles per hour at max with Nitro, and I believe only one other D-Class car can go over 200 miles per hour at max, and that would be the Porsche 911 Targa, which is better than the Hemi and the Shelby, but worse than the Furai. Now, this car here, as I said previously, in the hands of a very skilled driver, can probably actually beat the Furai's lap time on a lot of tracks. But in the hands of most people, I would say that the Furai is likely going to be a better choice simply because this one is really like hard to drive. It does not accelerate very quickly. Its drifting is not all that great. Its nitro efficiency is not very long at all. It's actually one of the lowest in the game, I believe. So yeah, if you want to drive this one effectively, you really need to have experience with other cars like this one that are not very agile but have high top speeds. But if you do have have that experience then you probably will do quite well with this car now another thing to keep in mind you know that those cars are usually not the greatest ones for multiplayer like we can see here that this Elise which is definitely not as good as this car overall in terms of lap times is still getting ahead of it on Rome which is granted a twistier track but in multiplayer in general those sorts of cards with more agility are going to be the ones that are going to be doing a bit better. At least for most people in multiplayer, but of course if you can drive this one well, go for it. And you can probably pick up a lot of wins if you're really good at it. That being said, while this car can do quite well in Bronze League, in Silver League is where it starts to get a bit tougher. And a bit later on in this video, you will get to see some races with this car against some of the higher end C-Class cars, such as the Artega and the Acura, Alfieri, Pininfarina, things like that which again are maybe a little bit slower than the TVR, but are going to be a lot better in terms of their overall stats. Now for one on one of the Himalayan tracks, and this one is still in Bronze League, so we have, as expected, a bunch of E-Tenses and Elises. And I am so very glad that Gameloft decided to keep the ghosting in the first 10 seconds of the race. That has truly been a bit of a lifesaver and a bit of a stress reliever, because you don't have to worry about somebody knocking you down or whatever in that time. You don't have to worry about getting pushed aside or anything either in that little bit of time because I know we had the 10 second knockdown shield at the beginning of races for quite a while now which was nice but people could still shove you to the side especially if the beginning of the race was really really tight such as that one at the beginning of one of those Rome tracks the one with the turn at the beginning then the really narrow part after that I'm sure you guys know what I am talking about some other games like Forza Horizon 4 also got this feature I'll buy it for a bit longer I think that one was 30 seconds but I'm glad it came to Asphalt 9 as well now this race has has been a pretty close one so far against the other D-Class King, the Mazda Furai. And I think this one here really shows you that these cars are honestly pretty equally matched, all things considered. Just that this one can technically get better lap times on the majority of tracks. And that is actually how I rank my best and worst cars in each class list. If you guys didn't know, what I do is if a car can beat another one on more than 50% of tracks, then I put it above it. That is definitely my most important important criteria in deciding where a car goes on the list and I was wondering since that is pretty much
much only based on potential times in events. If it would be a good idea to make another list ranking how good cars are in multiplayer, and a couple people have suggested this to me. The only thing that I'm really not sure about if I should do that or not is would the list actually be different enough to warrant a completely different list for them? Now, probably what I would do if I decided to do that would be to have two lists next to each other in the best and worst cars in each class list video, one for events and one for multiplayer. And I could do that. I just want to know if you guys think if it would really be worth it to make another list for multiplayer, if it would be different enough. So let me know down in the comments what you think about that. And now I would like to talk about the Grand Prix event for a little bit, because some people have been wondering, when am I going to make a video about it? Well, I was originally planning to make a video about it today, but then something happened with the qualification round that we were not expecting and makes me want to wait a little bit longer to see how it all pans out. Because what happened, apparently, is that based on whatever time you got in the practice rounds, you will be put with a group of people in the qualification round that have somewhere close to the same time as you. So if you make a really good time in the practice round, then you're going to get paired up with a lot of other people who did really good times in the qualification round. And so, might it be possible for someone to lowball their time in the practice round to get paired with not as good of a group of people in the qualification round, and therefore have an easier chance of getting in the top 10? Possibly, but I kind of want to see what will happen a bit later once we get to the final rounds. So that's why I'm waiting to make that video, because I was wrong about how the qualification rounds worked with the pairing and all of that, and I don't want to make a video and give a bunch of inaccurate information about it, you know? So I will be streaming this Saturday, which is after the final rounds begin. Now, I'm not sure how long the final rounds were last, but hopefully it's enough time for me to get in there, understand it a bit better and make a video about it as well because I don't want to just have a live stream about it. Also about the Avia special event, well Danny VG posted something in his community about what you will actually need in order to get the car and you would need a gold maxed Lotus Evora, Lotus Elise, Pininfarina H2 and this is the real kicker, a gold maxed Civic, which as you guys probably know has a car hunt going on right now, but it has 500 possible races to play and who is going to do that? And also who's going to pay for all the packs for that as well? Now I know some people have, Afik has maxed it, but I most likely won't be able to because the thing is, even if I do that, I'm not going to be able to get the car because you also need a, I think, a, what, four-star Aston Martin GT12 or something like that, which would take me many more thousands of tokens to get. And at this point, I don't even have the final epic that I need for the Lotus Evora. I've been playing the event and the daily events that could give me one of those, and I actually got one of the two that I needed early on in it. It was like my second race or something, but after that, I haven't gotten any. I've played dozens of races in that. So, yeah, it is looking now like the Avia is going to be an unobtainable car for me, which, if it ends up being that way, will only be the second ever special event car besides the Jesco, let's not talk about that, that I have not been able to get. However, I will still see what I can do in here, perhaps if some new developments come on, and I don't know what would possibly happen, but I'll let you know if anything changes about my status of getting that car. So now it is time for my general review of the TVR Griffith. It is, in fact, I would say, the overall king of Class D, with the Furi being a close second and can still beat it on a lot of tracks. This car is definitely harder to drive than the Furi, but having a much higher top speed with pretty poor stats in all other areas. The drifting and handling are not amazing, the acceleration isn't great, and the nitro efficiency is probably its biggest weakness. And if you don't have this car max, the nitro is even worse. At stock, it was like, shoop! I don't know what that was. Anyway, we are now rounding the final bend ahead of an Artega, Pininfarina, some ACRs, stuff like that, to come in first place. And I see that Bebop is enjoying celebrating his victory. Thanks to him for these races. Thank you all for watching. Please like the video if you have enjoyed, and consider subscribing for more Asphalt and other games content. And I will see you in my next video. Goodbye.